as David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. The sermon title for today is, you will be changed. You need to be changed. Wow, we'll be changed. To be a Christian, you will be changed. And you need to be changed to be a Christian. And it will take a willingness. It has to be a volunteer. You have to voluntarily change. You can't change. You can't be stubborn in your change. You can't be rebellious in your change. But it's going to be a voluntarily change that you're going to have to go through. And when you take it, and when you are when you are more, when you're willing to change, then God will transform you. God will transform you and you will be open up to the heavenly host of blessings that you should that, that you will receive. You will get the, you know, after a certain period on the job, a 90-day probationary period, then you are considered a part of that community. After so long, you're able to partake in some of the benefits of that particular job. Right? And what I'm telling you is, in any time you become a member of another culture, any time you become a member of another culture, it is expected of you to embrace the rules and the customs of that particular culture. Who knows what I'm talking about? Can I hear an amen if you understand what I'm saying? Whenever you become a member of another culture, it's expected of you to embrace the rules and the customs of that culture. You're, it's expected of you. Yeah. Right? When you become, whenever somebody comes over here from another country and they want citizenship here, it's expected of them to follow the rules and the customs of this country. When you go to a job somewhere and you become a part of that job culture, it's expected of you to operate in the manner of that job. It's expected. So any culture that you go into that you want to be a member of, it's expected of you to follow and embrace the rules and the customs of that culture. But people think that for some reason the church should be different. That we should be able to express ourselves however we want to express ourselves, do whatever we want to do, and still be accepted with God. But that doesn't fit. And it doesn't fit in any other culture, so why should it fit in God's culture? It doesn't fit. There are certain rules, there are certain customs that you have to follow within the will of God. You have to follow God's laws and commandments because you, when you want to come into his culture, into his heavenly host, you have certain things that are expected of you. Just like in any other culture. But Nowadays, people don't want to think that way. They think that I should, be, I should be accepted on my terms, how I feel, how I think. But that doesn't happen in any other culture, so why should that happen in God's, in God's world? Because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And if people think that way... If you, have a, if you work with somebody and they have a certain way of doing things that they think they should be accepted any old way that they, they are, and they think that God should accept them any old way that they are, then I want you to, I want you to, serve, I want you to show up to work. You know what I mean? Why don't, they, why, don't they tolerate somebody, why don't they tolerate somebody showing up to work intoxicated or underneath the influence? Why don't, they, why don't they tolerate somebody physically abusing somebody on the job? No, boss, I ain't going to do that. And you just give them a whack in the face. Accept me. This is who I am. This is me. <laughs> it don't work anywhere else. But they want it to work in the church that way. It don't work in the church that way either. There's certain things that are expected of us. Right? So I want us to understand. I want us to be aware of that. When you become a Christian, you have to live by the instructions of God. The acronym. I'm going to give you the, an acronym of the Bible. Any, uh, we have, we've heard that before, right? B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. 
So that means that we have to adopt the instructions for that culture. We have to be able to embrace what God's telling us to do in order for us to live with him, to be accepted with him. To be accepted with him. So let's go ahead and jump. I don't have a really big outline today. So let's go ahead and jump into our outline. And we're going to start with Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. And I want you to understand, I want, let's look at this, let's read this. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Why is it important to be, why is it important for them to be filled with the knowledge of his will. Why would it just be important to be filled with the knowledge of their own will? Why do I got to know about God's will? If I can do what I want to do and say what I want to say and act the way I want to act and think that I want the way that I want to think. Why, do I, why would it be important for me to be filled with the knowledge of his will? So it said, and to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You have to, in order for you to carry out the will of God, you have to know what it is. With the, a, part of the, a part of the Lord's prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How is his will being carried out? It's being, it should be carried out in every one of us. So we have to know his will. So it's no longer our will, but it's his will that should be carried out. See, some people may love God. Some people may love him, but they're ignorant about him. They're ignorant of his ways. They'll say things that God doesn't want said. Sometimes, some people may say things like, uh, like, I swear to show how sincere they are. I swear. Swear not. But see, that's just ignorance of being ignorant with God's will. Because God says, swear not. Neither by heaven, nor by earth. Right? So, but see, it takes to have a knowledge of God to understand that. It takes a knowledge. It, some people think that that they should be able to, because they think it in their mind, that they should be able to carry out what's in their mind. And they think because what's in their mind, they think that God may be, God must be in favor of that. Because it's in my mind. I feel, I feel led by God. I feel led by God. Well, one of the ways to know if you're being led by God, see if your way lines up with his word. I feel led by God. Well, God doesn't say that. God doesn't do this. Right? That's not the way God tells us to be. But check your check if you're saying you're being led by God, check out God's word. Does it line up with what you're saying you want to do? Does it line up? Okay, we're going to turn into Colossians, staying in the same chapter, one verse down, Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. It said that, and it's going to be a continuation. I'm going to read 9 and we're going to go into 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard, heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, with his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This is verse 10. That you may walk, that you may walk worthy. It sounds like the above the above verse sounds like it was a condition for this to happen, doesn't it? Because it says that sounds like that's a that's a that's a reaction to that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, that you may walk worthy unto the Lord unto all pleasing. So it sounds like if we don't understand his will, then we're not going to be able to carry out his will, and we're not going to be able to please him. That's what it sounds like. 
that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, if, you, if you're following me, turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice. I want to pause right there on sacrifice. Does a sacrifice feel good sometimes? No. Sacrifice don't feel good. Do you feel like you're, does it feel like you're denying yourself when you're having a sacrifice? A sacrifice. Are you denying yourself when you have a sacrifice? Anybody talk to me, please. Somebody talk to me. Are you denying yourself when you have a sacrifice? Amen. Yes. Amen. Huh? Right? It doesn't always feel good when you're sacrificing. But it seems like that this world wants to only do, nowadays, this world only wants to do what feels good to them. Only want to do what feels good to them. Oh, it's, it's causing me some discomfort, it's causing me some pain, that's not for me. Right? Why would God want me to have some displeasure or some pain? Why would I want to deny who I am? Why would I want to cause myself some hurt? But it said, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Now, why is there a sacrifice in living for God? Because not every behavior is accepted with God. So some people who preach, you could do whatever you want to do, what saved, always saved. This kind of throws a wrench in that. Not every behavior is accepted with God. That's why there is a sacrifice. That's why there's a sacrifice. If it wasn't a sacrifice, I would not be living the way that I'm living now. This is not what I was accustomed to growing up with. This is what I was not used to. I came to God when I was in my early 20s. But I was not used to this kind of lifestyle. If it was not a sacrifice, I would still be doing some of the things that I turned loose years and years ago. If it wasn't a sacrifice. But it says... But it says this, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. And this is holy, acceptable unto God. Now how can it be, how can you be accepted unto God without knowing what God accepts? Right? Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's a reasonable service. It's not even an out-of-way service. It's not an overtop service. It's not saying, you know what, man, I am, I am the best Christian around. Look at what I'm doing. No, that's only your reasonable service. Only your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. See, that's why there's a sacrifice. Because some of the things that we want to do, we want to conform. We see them out there carefree doing what they want to do. We want to conform to that. We want to do that. Look at what they're doing. I can't do that. That's, why can't I do that? Because that's not pleasing to God. Okay, now this is my sacrifice. This is my sacrifice. Right? They're upsetting me. I can't tell them, I can't tell them where to go and how to go there. Because this is my sacrifice now. This is my sacrifice. Right? I can't, I can't go, you know, but I, 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 I spend hours in the gym getting, getting buffed out, getting that washboard abs. I can't go on the beach with my shirt off. Why? To so cover up that nakedness, right? I can't, so I can't, that's my sacrifice. I can't show my buffness. <laughs> that's my sacrifice, right? My sacrifice. I can't, it's time for church, right? And they're telling me to come into work and they're going to give me not overtime, not double overtime, but triple overtime. Okay? This is my sacrifice. I'm going to church. This is my sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's a be not conformed to this world. See, the world would conform to them things. The people work out in the gym. They want to show their body, man. They, you know, clothes, I don't know why clothes. Why is clothes because they're more and more now whenever, they're, whenever it's less and less material now? The cost closes cost them more and more, right? You understand me? I'm saying, you know, they want to they want to show their body off, man. They're looking for the the skippiest and this and this most, you know, uh, revealing thing now. That's conforming. That would be conforming to the world, cause the world's doing that. Going to work and not triple overtime. 
People in the world is going to do that. I say, yeah, I'll be there. Triple overtime? You kidding me? I get three days in the one? I'm there. The world's going to do that. Conform to the world. But it be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. Your mind has to switch. And you can't switch it. You can't switch it. It's going to take you being willing and putting your place, putting yourself in a position to be willing and ask God to switch that mind. Because, Lord, I want to still do this. Lord, I want to go do the triple over time. Lord, I want to do this. So it's going to take you asking God and you being willing and asking God to switch that mind, to renew that mind, because you can't do it on your own. And if you want to know, say, well, how do you know you can't do it on your own? Then you can stay in Romans, go to chapter 7 and verse 8. He said, Apostle Paul said, the things that I didn't want to do, those were the things that I did. So the things that I didn't want to do, those were the things that I didn't do. Yeah. Right? The things that I wanted to do were the things that I didn't do. The things that I hated, that's what I did. You can't do it. You can't change yourself. Because what you've been doing for so long has been ingrained in you. Has been ingrained in you. What you've been doing for so long, if you've been, if you've been out, if you've been out drinking, if you've been out womenizing, men not men, 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 menizing, whatever you would call it, <laughs> right? You can't change that because that's been ingrained in you. You had the joyful experience of doing that. You can't change it. You can't change it if you want to change it. It's going to take Christ in you to change that. Because if we could change ourselves, why would Christ have to die? He still would have been here. He, he, he wouldn't have had to die for us. But we are flesh. We are made with limitations. We are weak. And we can't overcome them strongholds. It doesn't talk about... Uh, what it says, he, 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 he comes to, you know, mighty through breaking down of strongholds, right? He can let them strongholds go. What did it talk about when you fast? It says, and that, you know, what does it say about fast? It says, is this not the ch fast that I've chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to let the old praise, let the old go free and that you break, break every yes. yoke? Amen. Right? See, it takes, it takes Jesus to be able to do them thing. And doing the principles that Jesus sets up to do that. We can't do it on our own. But if we go back to the scripture here, in Romans 12, in, uh, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It takes Christ to renew that mind. You can't do it on your own. I'm telling you, you can't do it on your own. You can't. Preach. And this is why I think a lot of people in the world got it mixed up. They think that, you know what, I can't do what, I can't do what the Bible's telling me. I, I, you know, I tried. I can't, I can't turn away the alcohol. I can't turn away from that. And then you have to ask them, did you receive the Spirit of God? Have you, filled, have you been filled with His Holy Ghost? Have you been baptized in the name of Jesus? Because without that power, you can't do it. He told them, tear ye at the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. You can't do it without the power. It takes that power of God to do that, to change you. You can't do it. Amen. So it says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that, that you may prove what is that a good and acceptable and perfect. There go perfect again. Some people act like you can't be perfect, but in the Bible it talks about, I see perfect different times. And perfect will of God. Perfect will of God. Moving through our outline, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. And it reads, study to show thyself approved unto God. Now, we go back up, right? If we go back up to that, right? Let's go back up to a one verse, right? Because it said, let's go back up to Romans chapter, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body that living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Now, if we go down to 2 Timothy, second chapter, verse 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You see, it's going to take studying God's will to be acceptable with him. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A good, a, 
a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, knowing where to apply it, when not to apply it, rightly dividing that word of truth, knowing when to apply it. when does this fall into, when should we be doing this, when should they be doing that, when should this happen, knowing how to divide that word, knowing how to put it into practice. Here go the last outline. Are you all still with me? Last outline right here. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So when people tell you, oh, man wrote that, man wrote that, tell them to read this one right here. Tell them to read it. Right? I had somebody tell me that before. Different times people, you know, I talk to people on the job and they're, they, they say they don't believe and then after they get finished talking to me, for some reason they seem like that they start to believe. Most of them seem like that happens that way. But that, somebody said, well, you know what, man wrote that. And this is what I did. I said, okay. And that's what I did. I said, hey, listen, I want you to take this right here. Right? All right. Um, I want you to, let's have the, have the first thing. I want you to take this right here. Can you go to the board for me, please? And could you write down, have a nice day? Just write, just write it somewhere. Have a nice day. Yeah, write it up there, please. Have a, have, a, have a nice day. Have a nice day. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to ask you. Or them her words or them my words? I read it. Or them her words or them my words? Your words. Them are my words. Right? You may be seated. Thank you. See the plain as day, plain illustration. Right? Plain illustration. Very clearly. Very clearly. So when people say, you know what? Man wrote the Bible. Say, you you don't you wrote you're very you don't have an understanding. You don't have an understanding. I want you to understand that no man didn't write the Bible. They were the instrument that God used to write the Bible. But they didn't write the Bible. It wasn't their words. It was God's words. You understand? And so what I want you to understand, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness. So I want you to understand that, you know what? We have to understand the will of God for us to carry it out. We have to know what's expected of us. We have to know what would be accepted of us. People are just doing whatever they want to do and thinking they're doing it in the name of God. Doing whatever they want to do and think they're doing it in the name of God. Yes. And they're not. They're not doing it in the name of God. And then what they do is they, they spread that falsehood to other people and they hear it. That's one of the worst things that I can I'd rather for nobody to talk about God than to say something about God that's not true and somebody else picks it up. Amen. Because they're spreading falsehood. Yeah. Because whenever, whenever somebody teaches them the truth about God, it may be a struggle for them to reset to receive it because they were always underneath this under, this other understanding. But see, no wonder why God said, "How can they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. How can they preach except he be sent?" No wonder in the Word of God, whenever Philip was told himself told to join himself to the Ethiopian eunuch chariot, and he asked him, he was reading in the book of Esaias. And he said, does thou understand what thou readest? He said, how can I except some man should guide me? How can I? Because people, are, they have false understanding about what the will of God is. You have to have a true man of God teaching you what the will of God is. If you don't, you'll find yourself in falsehood. You'll find yourself... Uh, people blending in religion with superstitions and, and everything else like that. You know, like, in the name of Jesus, where's the salt? So I can throw it over my shoulder. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You're like, I know that's in the, that's in the Bible there somewhere, isn't it? No. <laughs> it, said, it, it does say we are the salt of the earth now, but it didn't say throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> but people will do that if they don't have the understanding of God. If they don't have a true man of God teaching and guiding them. 
They will grow up with false. They will. They will. They will accept yes. the word of God in falsehood, yes. and they'll be doing things wrong. Amen. Amen. Doing it wrong. People talking about, you know what? I should be able to smoke weed because it's natural. God made it. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? I mean. <laughs> It just dawned on me how ridiculous it is, you know what I mean? But one of the things that I tell you, one of the things if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna waste your time talking, waste don't talk to a weed head. I'm gonna tell you. They 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 you can't you're gonna have a hard time shaking them. You will. I just spoke to them in my days. I mean, you you you'll have a hard time. You will. They'll come up, God made it. God made it. God made it. It's natural. Only you know like the only, you know, it's just, it's, it, cigarettes is a lot more worse than that, and cigarettes are legal. They'll come up with all kinds of things, man, and I'm telling you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, what I'm telling you is that, they said it's natural, God made it. Well, didn't God also make that, that tree that they weren't supposed to eat off in the Garden of Eden, too? <laughs> so, everything that God makes doesn't mean that he permits you to have it. <laughs> all right. But you gotta have a knowledge of God to, to understand that, though, right? You gotta have a knowledge of God. I don't. I don't try to get into arguments with people who who, who are seriously That's prone to to uh, to smoking to uh, marijuana because I know they have a they have a strong they have a strong feeling and they're strongly convicted by it. You know, what I mean, so I don't I don't get into it. You know, you'll find people, man. That, you know, and like they'll come up with all kinds of reasons why it should be legalized and and, and and why you know there's nothing wrong with it and. You know, and it's legal in 25 states. Why isn't it legal here? And all this other stuff. I mean, it's just <laughs> telling you. You know, what I mean, it's it's just something. You know, what I mean, but it takes God to to uh, to, uh, to to deal with them. You know, what I mean, uh, it really does. It takes God to deal with them, yeah. and and, and um, don't 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 justify it. Yeah, they will. You talk to them. They'll they'll justify it. And I gave you some of the arguments that they come up with. They'll justify it. They will, um, but it doesn't mean that it's not right. You know, what I mean, you know, if they look at, they talked about some of the harmful things. The tar in that is more, way more potent than cigarettes is, right? The so tar in is way more potent than cigarettes. And you try to tell people, say, you know what? <laughs> they have a, they have an issue taking a pill that that the doctor prescribes them. But they'll go to some some drug dealer off the corner and get a dime bag or a nickel bag or whatever it is that they get. They'll get that, not knowing what that guy's cutting it with to try to stretch his product. Yeah, see, yeah, see, you know, I grew I, I grew up in the streets. You don't understand. See, I'm not gonna talk this language, right? They don't know what it is that he's cutting it with, but they're accepting that. But they won't accept the little pill that the doctor that the doctor prescribed to them, right? They're gonna question that. Well, where's that from? I don't understand. I don't think that. I don't. I don't. I don't like taking medication. You don't mind taking them street drugs, do you? <laughs> What's wrong with you? But that's just people who are. They don't have the. You know. I mean. Don't. That are uh, misinformed. Don't you be misinformed. And don't you be misinformed about the will of God. Most importantly, mm -hmm. don't you be misinformed. Mm -hmm. People have some some really really distorted views on things. Very distorted views. Right, but see, one of the things about it is, is when you talk with people, if you study your Bible, what people bring up won't trip, can't trip you up if you're if you're rooted and grounded in the Word. They can't trip you up, right? And you're actually, whenever you realize it's getting to that point, it's time to shut that conversation down anyway. Yes. When you feel like it's just basically them trying to debate and to dispute what you're saying, it's trying to shut it down anyway. But you may want to keep them if that what they said in mind because there may be other people who feel that way. And they may have heard other people like that speak to where you got to say, no, the, the, uh, listen to this. The Word of God talks about this so you can address that particular thing. But you might not want to keep addressing that with somebody who you know who's just constantly just wanting to debate it. All right?